Hey freaks, it's JJ. Welcome to my channel. Um, in my previous video, I talked about Arian's first album, The Final Experiment, and I was not planning on doing this follow-up video um, for a little while, but since your guys' responses were really, you know, um, overwhelmingly excited about um, hearing more about the Arian universe, um, I decided to do this video sooner. So, Thank you so much to everyone who responded in my Metalhead community. If you want to join my Metalhead community, um, a lot of video recommendations that I do will be taken from there. Um, feel free to follow the link down in the description and sign up for my newsletter. Uh, anyway, let's get into this because this is a huge album, 17 tracks. Um, so this is Arian's 1998 album, Into the Electric Castle. So let's start off with track one. Um, welcome to the new dimension. So, so this introductory track starts off as um, a bit of a narration where we kind of find out like the plot of, of what is to come in this album. So uh, we find out that eight people have been plucked from like various, you know, eras of time. Um, and they enter kind of this like unknown realm of like psychogenesis, uh, where this eerie voice, which we come to find out is named Forever of the Stars, speaks to these eight people and tells them that their mission is to release themselves from the web of wisdom um, and find out, you know, find their way through the portals of this electric castle. So then we go on to track number two, Isis and Osiris, and here's where we begin to meet a few of our characters um, that go on this journey. So we're introduced to five of the eight characters. So first we have the Highlander, and he believes that he has been taken to hell, basically. Um, the Indian believes that um, they are on this, like, prophesized journey where um, they have to kind of find redemption for, for their soul. Um, the knight believes that they are in Avalon and they are on a quest for the Holy Grail. Um, and then the Roman believes that they are in the underworld. And the Egyptian tends to kind of agree with the Roman about being in the underworld. And the, uh, the Egyptian, she's pretty, she's a little bit excited about, you know, being chosen to travel to this, like, great hall of Isis and Osiris. Um, and so, they all have different opinions of where they are and why they're there, but they kind of all soon come to realize that, they're, that their initial impression is wrong. Track three, Amazing Flight. So the characters are then swept away on their journey, um, just kind of guided by the voice of Forever of the Stars. And then here we meet two more characters, the Barbarian and the Hippie. Um, so the Barbarian kind of tries to fight this, this flight, um, and he kind of just tries to, like, attack this, like, interdimensional travel. Um, meanwhile, the hippie is just totally enjoying this, this, like, psychedelic ride. He's into it. He's relaxed. He, he's just living life. So, <laughs> two very different takes on this, on this, like, interdimensional travel that they find themselves in. Then we come to track number four, Time Beyond Time. And it's here where we meet our final character, the future man. Um, so, despite being, you know, like, more of a, like, advanced being, he still can't quite, like, comprehend what the hell is happening. Um, you know, like, between the future man and the knight and the Roman, they all kind of see what is happening, um, but, like, through different lenses, you know? Like, these characters' backgrounds kind of come into play and they, they draw different conclusions as to what's going on around them. Um, but you can kind of see in this track, or at least the way that I interpret it, is, like, they all have different interpretations of what's going on, but if you boil it down to, like, you know, the bare bones, really they're kind of all, you know, the same, and they kind of all kind of live on this universal principle of, you know, like, deep down, they're all experiencing, <laughs> they're all going through this human experience. Track five, The Decision Tree. So, Forever the Stars takes the characters and leads them to the decision tree, which is where he, like, explains to them that only seven, of them, uh, only seven of them can continue on. So that means that one of them is going to be left behind to die. So he leaves it up to the group to decide who's going to be the one to die. Um, so first of all, the bar barbarian steps up and he's like declaring that he is not going to be the one to die. You know, it's going to be anyone else, but it's not going to be him. So the barbarian then goes on to suggest that maybe it should be the Highlander that be should be the one to die. Um, so the two argue over like their various battle achievements and, you know, just a big dick swinging contest to some extent. So meanwhile, while these two characters are fighting, the rest of the cast kind of um, declare that no one should die. You know, they should kind of um, band together and rebel against this Forever of the Stars character and try to escape with all of their lives intact. We then get to track number six, Tunnel of Light. 
So there the characters enter this light where the Highlander ends up becoming really just overwhelmed. Um, and he kind of just, he seeks a place to hide, I suppose. Um, while the other characters kind of charge forward, you know, with their like individual, you know, perceived visions of, of heaven or whatever that looks like to them. Um, the Highlander just kind of closes his eyes and subsequently dies. So there we have our seven that continue on while the Highlander just kind of curls up and dies. Track seven, Across the Rainbow Bridge. So, uh, the seven remaining characters arrive at this rainbow bridge, which I like to imagine kind of like the Bifrost to Asgard in, in the Thor movies. Um, but, so the, but the characters, they, they have to cross this bridge. Um, but there's also a chance that, you know, the bridge won't support their weight, um, and then they'll fall into like a fiery death. So the knight is the first one to take the first step across the bridge. So how I interpret the lyrics is the, the knight is kind of fueled by this desire to get back to his lover that he left behind um, in his world. And so he's the first to strike out across the rainbow bridge. Um, the hippie and the Indian soon follow after him, and then Forever of the Stars, you know, kind of urges the rest forward towards the electric ca castle on the other side of the bridge. Um, so then the rest of the cast ends up, you know, running across the bridge, kind of like spurred on by the rally of the knight and the Roman. Track eight, Garden of Emotions. So uh, the seven characters uh, get across the bridge and uh, they can then see like the towers of the electric castle, but they're not quite there yet. Um, they first have to travel through this Garden of Emotions. Um, First, the hippie just kind of, like, embraces this, like, swirl of emotions, and he has sort of, like, a, like, a spiritual experience. Pretty much, he's, he's enjoying himself again. So the Roman is the first to kind of take charge to try and lead the group, so that no one gets lost and ends up dying like the Highlander did. Um, but the barbarian does not like the Roman taking the lead and taking charge. Um, so he tries, the barbarian tries to fight for, you know, this position of leadership, and, you know, gets caught up in this, like, cycle of aggressive emotion. And so those two kind of have it out with each other. Meanwhile, the, the Indian, she's having like a very prophetic experience um, in which she sees all of them dying. Um, the future man then figures out exactly what's going on. He understands that the garden is feeding off of all of their negative emotions. And so he then informs the others and tells them to free themselves of like anger and aggression. And that is the way that they can get through the garden. But meanwhile, the Egyptian's having kind of some kind of like paranoid feelings about losing her soul to Amon Ra. And I think she's she's definitely on the cusp of, of falling in victim to these emotions. So that flows right into track number nine, Valley of the Queens. So it's here where the group all bands together to try and get through the garden. But the Egyptian is overcome by these emotions and she's just struck by this desperate need to go home. Um, and so she knows that the only way to get home is to die. And so she ends up surrendering to death and going home to the Valley of the Queens. So we've then effectively lost another character. The Castle Hall. So this track's probably my favorite track on the whole album. I love this. I love this song. Um, anyway, uh, the six remaining characters arrive at the Electric Castle finally. And Forever of the Stars tells them that they must face the shadows of their pasts. And he kind of warns anyone who's like shed blood. Um, and he tells them to be wary of like the gathering of spirits that will come to seek revenge. And so here is where we find the barbarian and the knight are attacked by the reincarnated ghosts of those they've wronged. Uh, but I think they make it out okay because we get to track number 11, the Tower of Hope, where they all end up escaping the hall and trying to climb up this tower. Um, so Forever of the Stars tells them that they have to have hope to make it to the top of this tower. Um, at first they all begin seeing visions of like this perfect world, you know, this utopia. Um, the hippie and the future man nearly get caught up in this euphoria, but then they come to realize that, you know, it's, it's all in their heads and none of it is real. And so they can't let it distract them from, from reality. So the future man begins to warn the rest of them not to fall victim to, to the visions that they are seeing. Track 12, Cosmic Fusion. So, however, as they climb the stairs uh, in the Tower of Hope, the Indian gets caught up in the belief in these visions. And so despite, you know, like the, the hippie and the future man and the rest of the cast trying to warn her that it isn't real, she ends up surrendering to this breeze um, of becoming like one with the universe. So she lets herself get swept up by this breeze that actually ends up turning out to be death. Um, so the Indian dies as she is taken away by death. So in this track, we find we have lost another character to uh, the Electric Castle. 
track 13, the mirror maze. So the remaining group are told by Forever of the Stars that they must now enter this mirror world where uh, like the worst parts of themselves are reflected back at them. And they must confront these, like as Jung would say, shadow selves. And so the hippie sees his like broken childhood, the Roman is confronted by his pride, the knight sees the fear within himself, and the future man tries to hide from like all these secrets and lies I suppose he's committed. Um, the Roman is almost about to give up, but right at the last moment the knight breaks through the mirrors. He helps save the Roman and the rest of the cast and brings them to the other side. Track 14, Evil Devolution. Um, they then glimpse into a future world. This is like the real future world, not like the imagined utopia that they saw before. They get a glimpse of the future where the human race has evolved past the need for emotions and like earthly needs and desires. And so it's sort of like a like a cyber brain has developed um, in this evolution in this human evolution. And the future man realizes that this is like the worst thing that could possibly happen um, because the world is then ruled by machines. Um, so the future man's having a hard time because he, to him this is a very near future. Well, as all the rest of the cast will never live to see this future, the future man probably could. Track 15, The Two Gates. So the remaining characters finally get to the point in the castle where they come across two gates. Um, one is made of gold um, and one is like plain and old. The Forever of the Stars explains that one door will lead them, you know, back to their proper time and place in which they came and another door will lead them to oblivion. And so they must choose wisely which door they want to go through. So the barbarian is the first to step forward. He is positive he knows exactly which door is the right one. And so he selects the gold door, of course. So he opens the door and at first he thinks he's picked the right one, but then he ends up drowning in this like eternity of blackness, um, this abyss that it swallows him up. Uh, the rest of the group, of course, after seeing this, <laughs> they decide to take the old battered door. Um, and so before they go through the door, they, they want to know, you know, what, what was the purpose of this? Why, why have they gone on this journey? And, you know, did, did they succeed or not? Like, is this, is this just going to kill them in the end as well? So, um, this track is where we lose the barbarian and we only have four characters remaining, but these four characters want answers. They want to know before they go through this door, like what exactly was the purpose of their journey? Um, you know, like what, why did, why were they chosen and what was the point of it all? And, you know, like did they succeed in, in this journey or are they just going to open this door to be killed as well? So before the gate opens to the old door, um, Forever of the Stars finally offers the characters some kind of explanation. He explains that he is from a race like eons into the future where like all emotions have been kind of bred out of them um, and you know deemed unnecessary for their evolution. So he created Earth, you know, the home planet that all these characters are from um, and all the people on it he he built it by dropping like a meteorite filled with human DNA onto the Earth as an experiment to experience human emotions. So, you know, he wanted like the full scope of human of the human experience and so he like kind of carefully selected, you know, people from different significant time periods in human history and he chose them to go on this journey so that he could really experience all of their emotions um, and kind of like a myriad of different perspectives as well. Um, so Forever the Stars then opens the gate and tells them um, they will re remember none of what they experienced and they all go through the gate to get home. So that takes us to the final track, Another Time, Another Space. So the characters return home and they wake from this really vivid dream. They maybe have kind of like an inkling of something strange that happened to them, but they can't really identify that feeling. Um, and they kind of just assign this like uncanny sense of displacement to something else. Um, the hippie thinks that it was some kind of drug induced dream, while the future man kind of senses that maybe his memory files have been wiped. Um, and the Roman takes it as some kind of like spiritual rebirth. Um, and then the knight kind of thinks he's found the holy grail in a magic dream. So, uh, that's where the characters end up and that is where we conclude the story. So, yeah, we lost about half the characters along the way. It was a very, a very perilous journey. I think it's kind of interesting to wonder, you know, why did Arjun choose these four characters to survive the journey while the rest died? Um, so, like, the future man, 
you could see, like, maybe he chose only the best characters to survive. Like, the future man could see through a lot of the tricks and, you know, the various tasks that were playing against their emotions. And he definitely, I think, helped warn a lot of the other uh, characters about what was really going on and kind of helped help them get through the Garden of Emotions and help them through the Tower of Hope by warning them to um, ignore the things that were working against them and trying to manipulate them. Uh, the Roman, I think, uh, was like a more, a fairly honest character in that he, you know, he did his best to try and lead the troop. He, he kind of stepped up as like the leader, um, especially, you know, in the Garden of Emotions where he tried to protect the, the whole group by becoming this, by stepping into this leadership role. Um, and then the knight, um, I think also was, is one that's more like honorable of the characters in that he, uh, you know, he used a lot of like bravery to try and, you know, break through the mirror maze. He helped everyone out there. Um, and he was also the first to like blaze the trail across the rainbow bridge. Um, and then the hippie, <laughs> who is my favorite character throughout the whole ordeal, he was just totally relaxed, just chilling and living life. Um, and I think he, he probably helped the group a lot by just accepting what, you know, just going along for the ride, accepting what was coming to him, but also, you know, being relax like a relaxing presence among the group while also retaining some sort of um, skepticism as well about like what was going on around him. So maybe there's something to say about people who go on a lot of psychedelic trips and, and such, being able to discern reality a little bit better than those who've maybe never experienced that before. But anyway, so... I think that the characters that were chosen to survive this whole, um, you know, mission um, are the ones who stayed true to trying to help not just themselves, but the other people in the group. So instead of, like, placing their own needs ahead of others, I think all four of these characters really stepped forward to try and help the, the whole, the good of humanity. And I think that's kind of the theme that goes through, that goes through this album, is that, you know, we can't let our own personal issues um, distract us from, from, you know, what is best for humanity as a whole. So um, it kind of falls in line with the, the previous album, uh, The Final Experiment, and that is, again, another, like, humanitarian effort, a humanitarian theme and message that this album tells and that, you know, we should all come together um, through different backgrounds, through different struggles, and trying to try to do what is best for humanity. So... That is just my really long take on this album. <laughs> um, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you interpreted anything differently, of course, let me know down in the comments. Uh, I put this together based on the lyrics um, that I interpreted, the music, and um, a couple of websites that, that I perused with some, some really helpful um, ideas along the way. So one of them was a um, Aryan fandom. I will link that website page down in the description if you guys want to read about it. Um, it has a lot of cool, like, fan theories on there. And so I kind of drew from that, that place as well when putting together this concept. So let me know what you guys think. Um, make sure you hit subscribe if you want to get notified when I do the next installment of the Aryan Universe. Um, and let me know how soon you want to see that video. And join my Metalhead community if you want to suggest videos that you want to see from me next. I'll try and do those. I'll try and set those at the top of my priority list. So if you have not already watched my other video on the Aryan Universe, starting with The Final Experiment, then I suggest you go watch that now. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, freaks. Till next time.